too. Did you know that it was um, 1987, this past Saturday? This is how much has changed in college athletics. 1987, SMU received the death penalty on February 25th of 1987. Would SMU today get the death penalty? No, no one would. They got hammered, and it was a huge story, and Channel 8, Dale Hansen, and all them are the ones that broke it. But it's amazing how much has changed at the time. Yes, that was absolutely against NCAA rules. And uh, oh, allegedly, it's still not supposed to be that way. But it was something that pops up every year in my reminders on February 25th that the SMU death penalty occurred on tw February 25th of 1987. My, how things have changed. I mean, yeah, um, I'm sure, especially if you were right in the thick of things back then, it's it's even stranger to look back on but i mean we're we're closer to the 40 year anniversary than we are the 30 year anniversary so mm -hmm. it's been a really long time i mean it's been a long time and uh it doesn't seem that way i realize uh but it has been quite a while so i would hope that things have changed for the better in three and a half decades since that debacle and given that you had you know the 90s the 2000s the 2010s all passing and then wait it's nearly 40 years yeah so and then you know here we are it's 2023 and and yeah we're at a point now the last couple of years where it's finally opened up because just legally there's not an argument against it anymore but you know i'm sure there will always be that what if uh, for certain smu people of if they didn't get hammered the way that they did if things had gone a little bit differently if maybe they handled that differently than than they did originally um, but that still made for one of the better you know, whenever the, the 30 for 30 still seem to matter a lot, like they were like a big deal. Um, and I, they still air them, right? But they're yeah. not like promoted the way that they were once upon a time. But when they were like a unique thing that was like once a week, this new ESPN 30 for 30 is coming out. I remember everybody's buzz about Pony Excess. You know, that was one of those that was water cooler talk for sure. And uh, really a story that, you know, a lot of people didn't, didn't know all that much about that, you know, opened their eyes and, uh, still fascinating to to know that they're the only team that's encountered that, even in all that time that's passed and all the different things that have occurred. They were the only team that got hammered that way, and there's a reason behind that because they got hammered the way that they did, and they never seemingly recovered. And it is interesting now that here we are coming up on 40 years, and maybe, maybe just maybe, SMU's finally, you know, seeing a little light at the end of the tunnel as far as their affiliation conference-wise and their ability to go and compete at the level that they, you know nearly 40 years ago where we're competing at and albeit this time it'll be under fair and square rules and uh, they can flex their muscle financially and you know go probably get a trans am nil deal for whatever star running back they want to and not have to worry about it too much and and i think that's a a natural evolution for this sport that was long needed and it's about time that it's here so yeah uh I can't even imagine what it w must have been like back then during that time period. And, and can you imagine if that happened like in this day and age with social media and, and all like the 24 seven news cycle would have been insane. Yeah. I also look at it as you, you look back on it. It's kind of like people who would like burn someone at the stake for saying the world was round. And then now, you know, everybody just knows that it is. They got you trouble know? for that? Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, like back in the, like the, the dark ages where, you know, people were witches because they could start fires with like a match or something, you know, as opposed to the way they always did it. You know, it was just, it was weird that uh, that was kind of the, I don't want to say it was the total dark ages, but everything that SMU did is totally legal now, or even if it's not totally legal, it's totally unenforceable. The NCAA the other day came down on Miami for a women's basketball violation. Use that phrase that, came down. Yeah, I mean, like they, they, they like they sent a strongly worded letter and listed some punishments in there that didn't affect the athletes, the boosters, or really even the university all that much. And they did it the week after the state that Miami resides in changed the law to essentially allow what happened. So, like, what good did SMU do, the NCAA? As a matter of fact, you could say that SMU was, like, the decision that started to maybe undo them. Because eventually people were going to start going, well, one, they weren't going to do it again. I think right? it was Penn State. Well, that was maybe the, like, but that's when okay. they realized they had no teeth. I'm not saying that there weren't others before Penn State. But when they basically tried to give Penn State the death yeah. penalty, 
and Penn State, and legally they couldn't do it. But I do think it was from SMU on that you started having schools look at legal remedies for things because they didn't want to happen to what happened to SMU. Then Penn State comes along, and you have people that are ready. They were ready to do that and because it wasn't long. It took only a and, couple years. And for some that don't remember, and everyone keeps talking about Eric Dickerson and the Trans Am that was bought by an A&M booster, and he didn't even go there. What happened is they had been in trouble through the 70s and 80s, and then uh, it was a slush fund under the table payments to players and their families to entice them to come play for SMU. There was a story where they had signatures and a letter and an envelope and Dale Hansen and how Channel 8 was able to do that was phenomenal. I know SMU fans never forgave probably Channel 8 for that, but it was the death penalty. Yes, there was the Trans Am and Eric Dickerson, among some other stories as well. But uh, Roger Dodger, who's a USC fan, trying to compare that to what USC got hit with Reggie Bush and company. No, SMU basically was shut down. And when they came back, they, they were non-scholarship players. And they had one winning year in like 20 years. And so... All sorts of different, you know, from uh, violations to recruiting to scholarships to just, just shut, no TV, shut down. You can go to Wikipedia for more information. I brought that up only because of how things have changed dramatically in the last couple of years. Now, yeah, you technically shouldn't, shouldn't have a slush fund even today that just goes and pays player. That still would technically be outlawed, but who's enforcing those rules and who can prove it? Uh, the NCAA has lost a lot of teeth since that SMU ruling, um, basically all of them. And so, yeah, they got uh, they got slapped uh, in that Penn State uh, story uh, or in that in that situation, and they had some others not go their way where they tried to flex their muscle and you know got pushed back and realized, oh well, we can't really push back. And you guys kind of see behind the veil now. Y'all see the wizard, you know, behind the behind the curtain. And we're not as big and bad and scary as we used to be. And, you know, there's a lot of people that thought that Baylor was going to get the death penalty. There was a bunch of people on Twitter predicting that, mostly to probably just be hurtful and harmful as far as, like, recruits and things like that. There was a lot of, like, opposing teams fans that were, like, tweeting at recruits and saying that. Um, but I, I don't think we ever thought that that was all that realistic just because of how badly that screwed up SMU, that just there was a fear – the NCAA would not want to do that again to another institution. So, yeah, I mean, there's been certain situations we thought, well, and maybe. And did not have the jurisdiction. And didn't, really, well, yeah. Mostly, that was mainly yeah. it, is They didn't have the jurisdiction. Everybody that popped off about, they're going to do this, or they're going to do that, or they deserve this, or they deserve that, didn't have any idea what the actual rules were and that they can't really do that. So, yeah, there was just a lot of bad info uh, out there with that. But, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing that it's been that long. And uh, now you just got to be, I guess, calling your slush fund um, – uh, what uh, whatever uh, yeah, pick a pick a a nickname for your team that's yeah, like the, the nickname of the nickname the capital club yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. that's under nil or, rules or, or and the, the twelfth man pl fun yeah, club I mean, you know, yeah. and, uh, something or, like that the 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 one that the, the and it's it's really the NCAA can't do much with it no matter what they said last week when they handed down a very light sentence uh, NCAA sentence against the uh, women's basketball program by the way at Miami. Now, Friday, we had a lot of uh, 